This week, we're focused on exactly what you should be doing, the specific actions you should be taking during this market pullback, the crash, the coronavirus craziness to not just protect your business, not just to maintain and and survive, but to thrive to actually grow your business and come out of this once you know once it all ends and it will to come out of this on top to to come out of this with even more business than you than you started with on this episode of the massive agent podcast we're talking to a 40 year real estate veteran david finale he's seen the 1987 crash he's seen the dot com bust he's seen 911 he's seen the great recession in in 08 and 09 and he's survived those so he has some very specific advice on what we should be doing right now when it counts to make it through this and actually thrive The Massive Agent Podcast, with lead generation tips and strategies to get you more leads and sell more homes. I love to buy houses. I like to sell houses. It takes brass balls to sell real estate. Wait a minute. The leads are weak. You're weak. I've had better. Better. Oh, have I got your attention now? Here's your host, Dustin Brome. What is up, everybody? Welcome to episode 118 of the Massive Agent Podcast. We have one hell of a show because it's been one hell of a week, hasn't it? It's been one hell of a month. March 2020 is going to be the month that we we never, ever forget that we'll be telling our kids and our grandkids about. They're going to be writing about and studying this month forever. It's crazy. And every day it seems like a month goes by with with all this shit going on. So it's been crazy. So we have a crazy good episode for you. We're bringing on David Finale. David is a real estate agent over in Jersey, in Jersey. I'm sorry, I could not help it. You can't say Jersey and not say Jersey if you're not from Jersey. So I have to say Jersey. But David's coming on. He's been in the business for over 40 years. Okay, he's been a real estate agent for 40 years, which means he's survived for 40 years. He's seen the Great Recession, the, the crash in 08 and 09. He's seen 9-11 and what that did. He saw it, everything, like all the way back to you know the 1987 crash, uh, the, the Jimmy Carter years when interest rates for mortgages were in the teens. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if you had a mortgage and you're paying 15% interest? I mean, we bitch about you know when our when interest rates go up a quarter point and they're down at you know three threes and fours, maybe fives. It's just <laughs> perspective, people. Perspective. So David is going to join us here in a minute and really pay attention. Okay, there's some tactical stuff, some specific things you can do, but then there's also some foundational things. Don't don't blow past those. Don't overlook some of these conceptual things we talk about. I promise you, you stick through to the end, you're going to absolutely get those tactics and get those specific action items. But the foundational stuff that that you can interpret in in many different ways, if you can get that stuff right and and move in that direction, you're going to absolutely dominate coming out of this craziness. There's so guys, I'm pleading with you play offense, be smart about where you spend your money. But when you do, when you do spend your money on marketing and advertising, it goes so much further right now and so many more people are seeing it. It's just, it's incredible. And I cannot believe how many agents are just, they're pushing pause. They're, they're completely pushing pause. Unfortunately, I know some that have actually given up. They're like, mm, I'm not going to be able to survive this. I'm done. And so mentally they're already checked out. You can already tell they're leaving the business. And it's unfortunate. It sucks. Now, if they don't like the business, if they don't want to be here anyways, that's fine. Good. Go do something that you'd rather rather do. But if you're listening to this, you're trying to further your career. So I beg you guys, wherever you're at in the country, please, please put your foot on the gas, not the brake. Put your foot on the gas. Do more. And that doesn't necessarily mean spend more money, but just be more uh, thoughtful about it, more intentional, be smarter about um, you know the things that that your money is going towards marketing and advertising wise. And there's so much you can do for free with content and, and all the different platforms out there. There's so much you can do, especially uh, there's a lot of us that actually have a little bit more time because we're not commuting and we have a little bit more time. So you can use that extra time to learn a new skill or to start something new, like start doing videos, start a podcast, learn Facebook ads, take a course, hire a coach, um, you know, start learning something new that's going to help you take advantage, 
please, I'm begging you, take advantage. This crisis is going to be this crisis regardless. If you play defense or offense, it's still going to be what it is. It's still going to be shitty. It's still going to be crazy. People are still going to lose jobs. People are still going to lose lives, unfortunately. That's going to happen whether you're playing offense or defense. So you may as well play offense. For those of you new to the show, welcome. I hope that you come back for a second episode, but you might realize, well, this guy's a train wreck. I'm going to try to keep my train wreckiness to an absolute minimum this week, just for you, for you new listeners. My name is Dustin Brome, your host. I am an agent with eXp Realty in Salt Lake City, Utah. I am the co-founder of the Industry Syndicate Real Estate's podcast network. This show is a proud founding member of the Industry Syndicate network. I'm a national speaker, at least when there were still events to speak at. I was a national speaker uh, on all things real estate marketing and podcasting, a columnist for Housing Wire. I write an, a column every Friday for Housing Wire and the founder of the Massive Agent Society. That is our coaching program. Uh, one agent per market is allowed in uh, and it, we really want you to be able to speak speak clearly or not clearly to speak freely, not worry about competitors, seeing what you're doing and hearing what you're up to and, you know, um, all of that. So one agent per market can join. You can find out which markets are, are still available over at massiveagentsociety.com. So the whole the whole foundation of the Massive Agent Society is to help agents to get more business, okay? And using the Facebook ads platform, not just to get new leads, but to get more business from people that already know them. So that right now, that topic is so, so crucial. So I'm gonna do something for you guys. On Tuesday... On Tuesday, March 31st at 10 a.m. Mountain Time, so that's noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, I am doing a free webinar, 100% free. You don't have to be a society member. You know, I'm not asking for anything. Just register for the free webinar. I'll give you a link here in a second. But I'm going to be walking you through step-by-step, step, even if you've never done this before. If, if it's your first time ever running a Facebook ad, I'm going to show you how to start a retargeting campaign. Have you ever noticed that when you go look at something on Amazon, you see a product on Amazon or you go to Walmart's website or Target's website or whatever, and all of a sudden you start seeing that product or similar products on your Instagram feed, also in your Facebook feed. You start seeing the same stuff and you're like, mm, that's interesting. Well, that's a, a concept called retargeting. They know that if you've already looked at something, you're, if you see it again, you're more likely to buy it. That is how it works. It's the same reason why you have to follow up with clients, especially new leads, is you have to stay in front of them so they remember you. Well, I'm going to ask you a, a, a question you can answer to yourself. Do you think you're more likely to get someone to hire you if you are a stranger to them, if they've never seen you before, or if you're familiar, if they know you, they've seen you before, and you've given them some sort of value, whatever that means, you know, there's a million different ways to give value. Who's more likely to hire you? Obviously, people who have seen you before. So it's amazing to me how so many agents and other lead gen programs and 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 people think that the lead is the goal. That that like you get a lead and that's that you, know, you won. You're just starting. When you get a lead, that's like catching the football. Now you have to run and score with it. And there's a lot of stuff that that can happen along the way between catching the ball and running to the end zone. I like that analogy. I'm pretty proud of that one, but it's not all about the lead. Okay. Yes. Leads are, are, are crucial, but it's all about what you do afterwards. Okay. So that's part of it, but also who the lead is, is that lead a stranger? Have they just all of a sudden they're randomly seeing your Facebook ad. They've never seen you. They've never seen your name, your logo, your face, your brand, but you're offering something like a, a particular list of homes, or uh, you're going to give them a free home valuation or whatever. And they want that. Well, you're going to have many, many, many more people who already know you take you up on that offer, don't you think? If they've seen your logo, seen your face, seen your brand, seen, seen your name before, they're going to be so much more likely to, uh, to trust you enough to click and to submit their information and become a lead. And I'm going to take it even a step further, okay? Because um, I want uh, – you guys have to learn how to sh how to show ads to people who already know you by using the same strategies that Target and Walmart and Amazon and Purple Mattress and Wish.com and every big retailer that they use. You guys can use the same strategy. Wouldn't it be cool if whenever somebody 
commented on one of your Facebook business page posts, that then they started seeing ads from you? Or what if they visit your website? Uh, you know, somebody referred you to them, and they, so they Google you. Luckily, if you've done a good job online, they Google you. They see your name, and uh, or sorry, they Google your name. They they find your website. They go there. Now all of a sudden, they start seeing ads from you in their news feeds because they visited your website, or they watched a video that you posted on Facebook. Uh, they watched, you know, a couple minutes of it. You don't know who they are. You don't even know that they watched. But now all of a sudden, they start seeing more ads targeted to just them. This gets really cool when you can target specifically visitors who visited your website to seek a home valuation, and you can start showing them seller-specific ads to just those people rather than the internet as a whole. That's called retargeting. That's why all these major companies, these major e-commerce companies are major e-commerce companies. That's why they get to the billions of dollars is because they understand retargeting. We as real estate agents can do that too. You just have to know how. So I'm going to show you how. I'm going to teach you for free. I'm not asking for anything. All you have to do to register is go to massiveagentpodcast.com slash 10x webinar, 10x webinar, massiveagentpodcast.com slash 10x webinar. And I'm going to show you how to 10x the the awesomeness of your leads, how to 10x your ability to capture leads online and 10x the effectiveness of your advertising campaigns. I'm going to show you how to get 10 times more value or or 10 times more return out of the dollars you spend on Facebook ads. And it's all about retargeting. So I'm going to walk you through it with a screen share, show you step-by-step how to set it up. I'm going to show you what ads you should run, what it should look like, what you know? What kind of budget should you be spending on this stuff so that you can leave the webinar and have it down, set it up, and run it? That's all I want. N- now you guys need some help. You guys need a little boost to get going with this. And now is the best time I've ever seen in the last decade to start implementing this stuff because our competitors are sitting on the sidelines. So I'm going to show you. So be there Tuesday, uh, March 31st at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, massiveagentpodcast.com slash 10x webinar and register even if you can't be there live because you'll get the the replay. So the, the webinar is going to be through Zoom. All you have to do is register. If you're there live, cool. You can ask questions. You can, you know, uh, ask for, you know, ask follow-ups and all that. But if you can't make it, you, we'll email you the replay link as soon as it's available afterwards within an hour. And then you can watch it on at your own time. There you go. So be there for that. I'm super excited about that. Just a quick thank you to all of you guys that have subscribed to the show. Thank you so much. It's, I mean, thank, thank God that you, now you don't have to remember every Thursday morning to tune into the show. You get a notification now in Apple Podcasts or Pocket Casts or Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you for subscribing. It actually helps us out as well. Uh, it, it tells the Apple Podcast algorithm that the show's in demand. So please subscribe if you haven't yet. It makes life easier for you and it helps us as well. So then you're not such a freeloading podcast listener. You're actually giving back and not just taking. So thank you. I say that tongue in cheek. I love you guys. Um, But I also like talking shit. So there we go. Let's bring on David Finale, founder of Real Estate Skill Builder, a 40-year real estate industry veteran. Man, he has seen some stuff and he's, uh, you know, here's what's interesting. Before I get into this, uh, because he and I had a little conversation before we started recording and, you know, he's some of the current crisis he's nervous about. He's a human being. He's nervous about it. He's, and it's always the unknown stuff. It's like, we just don't know. Once you can start to define what things could look like, look like and how things could play out, you start to worry less, you stress less, and now you can, you can really move forward from a place of empowerment and an energy. And so that's what this interview does. He's nervous about certain things too, but because he's seen, uh, he's seen crashes and recoveries before. He knows what we should be doing right now. So let's jump into it with David Finale, the founder of Real Estate Skill Builder right now. All right, we're here with David Finale, the founder of Real Estate Skill Builder. He's an agent himself. He has been for many years and he's been through a big market shift. Uh, the last market shift took a lot longer to develop. It didn't happen over the course of weeks. Um, 
And so I wanted to bring David on to talk about that because uh, he's still here. He's still kicking. He's thriving. And, and his business uh, you know, survived through it. And there's a lot of us right now that are concerned about whether or not our businesses can weather it. I think, I think we all believe it's possible. We just, want to, we just want a roadmap. We just want to know what to do. So David, David Finale, thank you so much for joining the Massive Agent Podcast. Welcome. How's it going? Things go going, going really good, man. I mean, look, you know, it's uncertain times, but the thing is that we're here and, and we're here to help. Exactly. Exactly. All we can do is provide some guidance, some handholding, some perspective, and some ideas. It's up to you guys listening to do this shit. It, now more than ever. So here's the thing, and, and then we'll get into it. I just want to mention this. There's never been a better time in the last decade that that I can think of for for those who do take action to win big, it's now, it's now to the point where so many competitors of yours are laying down. They're playing defense. They're, they're clueless. They don't know what to do. They're not spending money on marketing, which means they're not growing. They're actually taking steps backward. Uh, for anyone who takes action and implements anything that they want to do, anything that we talk about, that we have talked about, anything that you've wanted to do, you have more opportunity now to win than you did a month ago, two months ago. I, I love that. So if, if you guys are listening, do the shit and you're going to win. You, you will win. So David, how long have you been in the business? And um, you know, tell us a bit about how you got to where you are today uh, within real estate. So I've been in the business now. It will be uh, 40 years. Um, 40 years. 40 years. So I, I went to... Uh, I went to college, got out of college in late 1979, didn't have a job, worked for my dad, who was a dentist, but built a lot of real estate. But I had gotten my real estate license in 1976 first, believe it or not. Um, and uh, I worked, I first learned how to sell real estate, how to be in a real estate business through a, a couple of older guys that I worked with when I was in college. And, and basically it was like, they did business by talking to their, their, their friends, talking to people they met, um, you know, so through that, through those years, I learned, you know, from, from two astute people, one guy, it was a partnership. So one guy was an insurance salesman before, and the other guy was a custodian at Johnson and Johnson, believe it or not. And he just took all, he was just a, a nice guy. So he talked to everybody he saw, Yeah, came, you know, became a very successful real estate broker. So time went on and have a job. I worked in, I worked in construction and then I worked for um, a county government planning board uh, here in New Jersey uh, for a couple of years. And, then started working with my dad in construction and management and everything and came along where uh, there was an opportunity for a real estate office to, to, to get involved in. And I did that in 96. Um, as time went on, I had to learn a lot of things because I've been in real estate. I've been in real estate sales, been an agent, uh, been in construction and everything and realized that, um, you know what? I had to learn a lot. And I did. And as time went on, so in my lifetime, we just fast forward, is I've been through the late 70s, 18 to 20% interest rates. Uh, Jimmy Carter's, Jimmy Carter right. era, huh? The late 80s with um, the uh, relocation uh, specialist, the, the, the green book that came out that had all the foreclosures in every state because, that, because of what happened after. Reagan did a great job with ACRS, Accelerated Cost Recovery System, but it had, had a bad effect on things later on the decade, but nobody mm. talks about that. And then, of course, 96 to 99 was eh, okay. And then 2001 was probably the last kind of normal market we had. And then we went into 04, 05, and then 07, 08. There we go. Um, and as it, started, as it started going down, I don't call it a crash. I call it a slow way to the bottom. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, what's happening right now, I think we may look back and think hey, this, this was a legit crash. Um, we'll see. We'll, we'll see how far it goes. I still think the jury's out on, on how hard housing will be hit. And I, I do think it depends on the area. Some areas are hotter than, than not. And the demand is still there in a lot of areas. Um, ability to get financing, right. that's going to be negatively affected. We'll see. There's, there's still so much uncertainty. But with, so where we're at right now, it's March. When this show comes out, it's March 26th, 2018. We still, we still haven't even hit the peak of this craziness yet. Uh, you've been through, you know, the, the dot com crash, you've been through 9 11, you've been through uh, the Great Recession, you've, um, 
1987, you know, the stock market crashed back then. Right. Uh, and by the way, did, did that affect housing at all? The 87 crash? Oh yeah. Oh it yeah. Did? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It was, it was, uh, you know, you had, you had things doing really well because of what Reagan did. And there were, there were actually fist fights in driveways over houses, you know, when the prices went, were going really, really crazy. And then all of a sudden, uh, RTC, the Relocation Trust Corporation, came into being for all the foreclosures that were happening because the prices were so high. The same, it's almost similar to 08 or what happened then, but it was a lot. It wasn't as bad. It wasn't wasn't as bad. It had nothing to do with the mortgage business. It had to do with just people overspending and overbuying. Yes, for for those of us that still don't know what the hell's going on, we're still. I mean, there's a lot of states right now today. We're recording this on Monday the 23rd that. State governments have said, real estate agents, you can no longer do business. That's, a, that's wild. That's unprecedented. Now you could still market your business. There's still a lot of things you can do, but we still don't know what's going on. So uncertainty is the highest I've ever seen. What should agents know about this period right now? What, what should we be expecting? Well, you know, what should you be expecting? You should be expecting also the unknown, so much of the unknown, of things that are going to happen. And, and it's, you know, they've used the phrase, they've used the word so much lately called the, the, the situation is fluid. And it really is. You know, what you just said about states stopping real estate agents from making phone calls and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, I, I, I work with a group of agents that are still prospecting. They've been prospecting because they haven't done that in New Jersey yet. Um, but they did it in New York, I think, yesterday or whatever. Yeah, but, I read that. That's but, wild. Right. It really is because it's like, okay, so we're not essential to the economy. Um, and you know what? I get that. Um, I'm not going to fight it. I'm not going to argue it. Uh, I could, but I won't. So, you know, you have to watch for, um, what people's actions are, what people are interested in, because now more than ever, you have people that are still interested in buying and people that have to sell. You've got people that have sold their homes that have a closing date that need to find a home. So what are you going to do? I mean, we had, uh, was on a, a, a call with some, some buddies last night and we're talking about how to run your business and are you still going for listings? This is the best time for a lot of things. One, it's an opportunity. You said it before, an opportunity to connect with your list, connect with your database, number one. I always said it's the number one p pillar of your business. It should be, if it isn't, guess what guys? I don't care if you've been in business 10 years, now you, 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 better, you better build it today. Right. So, so there's a lot of things you have to watch for, but you know what? You have to watch out for yourself first. That's great advice. How should people be looking out for themselves? When you were going through these tough times, you were faced with the uncertainty. You were faced with the unknown. What did you personally do to, because I assumed like real estate was your main gig. Like you were a full-time agent that that was your livelihood. So what did you do during these previous crashes or recessions or, or, um, you know, downturns, what did you personally do to take care of yourself and move forward? Well, in, in, uh, um, in the eighties, uh, I was uh, in property management and it was rentals. So we saw, we saw, uh, rentals be a little bit more difficult to do where today you, know, you got an apartment that's reasonably priced. It's, it, I mean, it's gone in seconds, right? That those years, it wasn't that easy. I mean, we tried so much to give away TVs at that time as well to get people to rent apartments. Fast forward all the way to 2008. At that time, I was a broker owner. So what I did was I saw who was, of my agents, I saw who was actually, who could concentrate on what was going on rather than, you know, there, I'm, I'm sorry, but there's going to be people bitching and moaning about no business, about this, about that. Look, if you, if you, there's, um, I forget who was talking about it the other day about the book, The Shift by uh, Gary Keller. Um, and one of the points was made in there that there's three types of agents. One is going to stick their head in the sand. Two, they're going to do, keep doing the same thing that they always did. That's always going to happen. And then the third, the third ones that are going to take advantage. Talk about fear. Talk about what's going on. You have an, I, you have an opportunity. Write down the, here's the thing, right? What I did back then was I wrote down the things that I could do to help my agents succeed. And I was willing, ready, willing, and able because I, I, I was well capitalized to be able to do that. Now, a lot of people won't be at this time, right? And that's going to be, a, that's going to be the difficulty. So, okay, sans money, no money, right? What are you going to do? You're going to communicate. You're going to take whatever you got that's free and you're going to, you're going to really work with it really hard. You're going to, like I said, connect with your database. 
You're going to use social media like it's nobody's business. But you need to do it in a way where you're going to get noticed and people get aware of you. You don't want to be cheesy. So remember that, you know, in order to communicate, you need to, you really, right now, you need to ask people how you can help them, if you can help them. And I've been doing that in my own business now. Is I, I, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing video texts and DM texts to people that are on my list, that are in my database and saying, hey, how you doing? It's Dave. I want to know if I can help you in any way. What can I do for you? Yes. That's it. Uh, okay. So, so with that, something I've noticed is the vast majority of people, when you ask that, they always say nothing. They're like, I'm good. It's, it's not until you prod a little bit and poke a little bit or maybe even ask specific questions where you can really get at something you can help them with. For example, the other day, um, a week or so ago, I went to my son's kindergarten to pick up a packet that the teachers made because they're all doing schoolwork from home. And I asked her, you know, how you doing? She's like, I'm good. I'm like, do you need anything? No, I'm good. I'm like, are you sure? Yes. I said, how about toilet paper? I actually had some in the car. I had a little four pack in the car. I was like, do you need any toilet paper? She's like, oh my God, yes, I'm out. I have none. And I'm like, here you go. So I gave it to her. And she, it, it completely made her day. But people are going to say they're fine. So it, first off, do you agree that you need to be more specific with asking them? Or, um, you know, what are you, it, and I, because that's been my experience. What are you seeing that people do need help with that agents can help them with right now during this time? Well, I think, I, I think if, if, if you, there, okay, so there's agents out there that have listings ready to go on the market, right? And, and, and people are saying, well, how am I going to get them on the market and say, why don't I just wait till this all thing stops? Yeah. Well, you know, what I, what I tell agents now is, look, if you've got listings that are coming up and you're ready to go, talk to your seller and say, hey, look, this is what I want you to do. I want you to take the pictures for me. Social distancing, we're, they're going to take the pictures and we'll go through them and, and we'll, we'll, we'll get them as best as we can. We'll do a listing agreement, digi-sign it, and we'll put it up. We'll put it on the market. Now, people may not be able to, to see it, but if you check, if, if, if agents and brokers check their views on Zillow, on Realtor, on their own MLS, views are going up tremendously. Yeah. So, so if you can start promoting that home, hey, look, as things get better, you can send the photographer over there to take the, to take the, to take the real pictures. Or if you need to make a price adjustment when people can actually see it, great. There are people today doing contracts sight unseen with a condition that they get to see the house, you know, um, when, the, when they're able to do that. That is people that have listings. If you don't have listings and you need business, it's, it's quantifying and qualifying your questions and your, and, and, and your, your, um, your discussions, right? Um, doing it basically on, on Facebook, on Instagram, where you're actually giving, giving information and giving good stuff out. And, and there's so many ways to do it um, and so many things you can do. But one of the things you need to do is mostly on a business page right now, because if you do it on a personal page with everything going on, you're going to sound more like you're selling. And you don't want to sell, right? So you want to be you want to be that information hub for your community. You right. want to, you want to connect and communicate with with um, local businesses, you know, because because they're they're the ones that are getting hurt the most as far as those types of businesses, and we are too. But you want to connect with people in in terms of you know, is there anything I can help you with? Is there um uh, you know, do you need me to help you? get your message out there through social media. I'd be glad to help you with that. So that's yes. one way you could help local business. So that, that's part of, part of what we're working on, what we're doing today. Yes. Uh, I think right now is such a great time because, you know, some agents have said, well, I can't market at all. I can't do anything because then it'll be seen as, you know, taking advantage of the situation or, you know, um, you know taking advantage of a crisis. Well, I mean, there's a right and a wrong way to do that. You should always take advantage of opportunities ahead of you, but how do you do it? Um, I think that there's such an opportunity for agents who are already seen as leaders in the community, or they should be. Uh, some are, some aren't. Um, to be the lighthouse in the storm, to be at your neighborhood level. I don't mean your city. I don't mean your town, your neighborhood to just be the resource. Tell people, hey, I found toilet paper and paper towels over at this store or, hey, this place is open, you know, uh, from nine to 11 in the morning for seniors or just be that resource and share news and, and put it into perspective too based on your perspective and be that lighthouse for your neighbors 
forget about getting business from it. The crazy thing is when you help, you will. Yeah. The, the, the first thing you need to take away from your thought is to get business from it. If you can separate yes. that. And that's, that's honestly, it's difficult for a lot of people. Yes. And, and you have to, you have to make that, that social separation, so to speak, not social distancing, but social separate. And if you did this in your normal business, you'd be a lot better off. It's separate yourself from the outcome, right? Yeah. Separate yourself from that check. But a lot of people that's, I mean, look, it, it's, it's, it's right now it's human nature. Uh, it always has been, but separate yourself from the check and, 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 and just be nice and, and do something for someone. That's what we're, we've been pushing uh, in, in, in what we've been doing here. Social media is so powerful. And I feel like we've been training for this period of time, our, our whole careers, you know, or at least since social media came out, we've been training by doing video, by doing posts and figuring out how to write them in a way that gets attention and, and being more concise with our messaging. We can now use that for such good at a, at a neighborhood level, because it, like you, like you said earlier, which blows my mind. New York has said no more cold calling until like September. September um, 7th, I heard. What a weird arbitrary number. Yeah, what's uh, that? Exactly. Until, I mean, heaven forbid you start on September 6th, <laughs> you know, it's, it's just weird. But that doesn't mean that you're dead in the water. You can be putting out and should be posting on social media a lot more because people are on their news feeds more than ever right now. But that doesn't mean you should be selling shit doesn't mean you should be pushing because then you're just seen as tone deaf and insensitive. So uh, I agree that you have to remove this thought of I'm doing this to get business. You have to remove that from your consciousness. That is an exercise in and of itself. It took me years to figure that out, especially when you're in a a period of time where um, finances are stressed and there's uncertainty about when you're, where your income is going to come from. Do you have any tips for that? How can agents come from a place of contribution, be that neighborhood leader, that lighthouse in the storm, even if they're having their own storm financially within the four walls of their own home? How can they do that? So I'm going to give you a strange answer, okay? I just want to prepare you for that. It's a strange answer. Yeah. Uh, those of you that uh, have uh, had relationships with um, – It's called a significant other or a romantic relationship. Remember how you started dating, okay? Think about dating and what you, I mean, let's let's face it. I mean, you you, you meet somebody, you want to ask them out, you ask them out, you go on a date, you're talking, trying to get to know each other. And your goal in the long run is to impress them. So a lot of times it takes a couple of months for the real you to come out. I want you to get to those couple of months. I always thought for me, it was three months, right? But if, if I was with somebody for three months, hey, I had a shot. <laughs> but, <laughs> yes. you know, so, so it takes three months for the real you to come out. I want the real you to come out now. And I want, you to, I want you to be nice to people. I want you to think that you just started dating them, but I want the real you to come out and have your heart show. Think people, men think with their heads, women think with their hearts. I want the men to get out of their heads a little bit and into their hearts. I want the women to keep thinking with their heart and be the people that they are because they're the ones making the decision when buying houses. Why? Because they're making it with their hearts. We need to get out of our heads and into our hearts. And also very, very important. Cut out the judgment completely. Don't judge people. Don't because everybody, you know what crap you're going through and the shit you've got to deal with. Believe me, they've got it too. So yeah. let's, we, so if we take that idea, it'll take that right out of your head and say, how can I help? I, yes, I, I found that, tell me if you agree with this. Okay. So people need a leader. People need, um, you know, that, that lighthouse, but how do you even get to the point where they see you as such? Um, I feel like right now, because literally, and we were kind of talking before, before we started recording, literally every single one of us at every level is dealing with fear and stress and uncertainty right now. The, those true leaders are the ones that are able to deal with that and, and put it aside or harness it or, or act in spite of it. Those are the, those are the ones that are really going to do well. And so if you're wondering, if you're like, look, I, I don't know where my, how I'm going to pay my bills next month. I don't know how I'm going to get 
food for my family next week. Um, we're worried about this, that, and the other. How am I supposed to be a leader in my own neighborhood? Just remember, when you show that heart on your sleeve, you become relatable. And people, I think people will see you as more of a leader because you're dealing with the same shit they are. You're just willing to stand up in spite of it and, and lead. It's not that you're above it. It's not that you're not dealing with that stuff. It's that you're dealing with the same stuff, if not worse, and you're still standing up to be helpful. You're still standing up and saying, can I go to the store for you? Do, do you need a run to the pharmacy? Um, do you, what do you need? Uh, you know, does your dog need to be walked? Uh, if you do that in spite of all the shit going on in your own life, people will see you as a leader. Would you, would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, uh, one of the things that happened around here was one of the supermarket chains opens up from 6 a.m. to 7.30 for people 60 plus. Um, Cause they're up at 4 a.m. anyways. <clears throat> yeah, well, exactly. Right. So, so, and, and <laughs> so, I'll admit that I am taking advantage of, yes, I am 60 plus, but that's okay. I'm taking advantage of What a great of, time to be 60 plus. I, yeah, that's what I said to one of the guys in the store yesterday. I said, you know what? I'll take it. <laughs> you're like but, skipping down the aisles doing push-ups while you're waiting in line. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm, I, I'm going, I'm going to work out. I mean, I, I, anyway, so, yeah. so, you know, it's, it's, it's once you, once you separate yourself and see what you can do for somebody else and actually do it. Oh, that's, I mean, that, that's big. And one of the, you know what, I, I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell other people to, to stand up and help people and go out. If you see someone, uh, in a in a parking lot, like a, maybe a senior, and say, hey, "Can I can I take your list and go do this for you?" Right? Maybe do that. Or even when you're in the store, buy some flowers, and the first person you see outside when you get to your car, go give it to them. That's cool. That's cool. I've done that, and and I will probably do that tomorrow because I, I I I mean, it it's it's great for them, but it really helps you too. It changes your state, and that's so important right now with. Because again, we're all dealing with fear and uncertainty. Um, I mean, total disclosure, I am, while I'm extremely optimistic and while I'm excited about all the opportunities that are available right now, uh, I it still freaks me out. I have kids. You know, I have two young kids. I have a wife. Um, you know, I worry about family members that uh, like my dad works for Delta. My dad oh, wow. works for Delta right now. And you know, my, my mother-in-law is a hairdresser. Um, I, I worry about them and, and what life's going to look like three months from now. So I deal with all that too. Um, but when, when you can consciously realize that you're going into a place of negativity or fear or uncertainty or stress and change your state, whether that's just turning your phone off, going to take a break, going on a walk, going to play with your kids, um, knock something off your to-do list, so you feel productive, but doing something nice for somebody else is to me, that is the most powerful thing there is. It really is like when I, it's so stupid, you know, with, with the mindset of what life was like two months ago, but giving a four pack of toilet paper to my son's kindergarten teacher, that's huge. It made her day. She damn near cried. And the feeling I had, like I, every, every bit of stress I had was gone and, and I was able to step forward with um, just from a better place like that. We're going to have to do that multiple times per day right now. Yeah. And, and, and I'm going to bet that everyone listening to this or will listen to this and everybody we know knows someone who might need our help and has their phone number. Hey, just text them. Say, hey, hey, do you need anything at the store? I got to go later. Can I pick you something up? Or, um, you know, do you need help with anything? Do you need help with anything around the house that, you know, that's outside or whatever, you know? So it's, 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 we have an opportunity to turn, to turn our business so, so much better than what it was. We have an opportunity mm -hmm. to be so human. Um, not that, not to use that word in, 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 in that way, just to say that we've got opportunities to really be great, great people. And, 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 you know, our society has gotten so callous to so many things. We have an opportunity to change that. And, and, and I hope, I hope we do. I know, I know I, I, I mean, I honestly, I, I like to say that I've always been that way, but there's so many people out there that, you know, they, they, they think, they think that, you know, they don't need to do that or they don't want to do that. Well, you know what? It's a part of life and it makes, it, it makes everything better, everything better. And we have an opportunity to do that today. 
We really do. I really feel like for those of us that that are able to gut this thing out and make moves during the, the craziness, take take this time to launch a podcast. If it's something that you've wanted to do and it's on your list, do it. Right freaking now. Like we can, you know, there's resources to help you do it and to figure it out. Um, right. Start doing videos, start whatever, anything. Uh, it, you, We have this opportunity now and you're right. We we can do such good in our communities, and that will in turn grow our businesses. Uh, you just have to trust that that will happen. It, you know, if if the community sees you as someone who was a helper and and a a lighthouse through, I keep using that analogy, but a lighthouse through the storm. Once things do rebound, everyone's going to see you favorably. Do you think that's going to benefit your business? Of course. Then all of a sudden they see a Facebook ad from you or a mailer or a door hanger or something where they're like, oh my God, this, this person in the neighborhood, they're, they're a real estate agent. Wow. But they see you favorably. And during the whole thing, they had no idea, no idea what you did for a living. It's going to help. You know, I think, I, I think one of the things that people are saying and, and, and the difficulty they might have with what we're, we're, we're suggesting they do is how do you do that? Because everybody's like shut-ins now and, People go into the store. No one wants to talk to you. They want to keep that six foot distance. I just, just want to let everybody know that I, I look, I know this is not a time to go out and spending a lot of money, but there's, there's, there's ways to spend just a couple of bucks to get known in your area. And that's, we can use, I mean, you can use different things on, on social media, but one of the things that I will start using tomorrow is I'll be using what's called engagement ads, right? Yep. They're, late, they're, 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 they're not as expensive. You're not asking for anything. And basically what you're doing is you're getting people to be aware of you. I know Grant Wise, a good friend of mine, who happens to be his birthday uh, uh, on the 23rd, um, is, um, was big in making sure that you, were, you got people aware of you and then aware of that they wanted something to, to buy or, or sell and that you were the person they used. So if you do postings, you know, there's a lot of different methods to do it that you can find out about there and also engagement ads, which aren't inexpensive at all. And I think that's one way to do it if you wanted to spend a couple of bucks because you don't know how to get out into the community. I completely agree. And um, I've, so when this comes out, I will already have done a virtual summit for Travis Tom's group about retargeting video ads. Um, Facebook video retargeting ads and how it's such an amazing opportunity for the reasons you just explained awareness and less competition. Your competitors, exactly. they're, they're not spending money. Uh, so you spend a few hundred bucks or 50 bucks here and there, uh, take a course, hire a coach. Like now's the time to take advantage and do, and, and you're going to be, yeah, man, you're going to grow so much. So during, during this time right now, David, we obviously have different tools available. We, yes. you know, back in, back after 9-11 or 08, 09, most of us wouldn't be talking about retargeting video ads on Facebook. What did you, what are some of the things specifically that you did during the shift uh, within your business marketing wise that, that helped or, or, or even things that you didn't do that you look back and you're like, damn it, I wish I would have just taken advantage of that thing. What, what are some of those things that we can probably look forward to now? Well, I mean, I, I think, I think um, back in those days, that was uh, 08, 09, 10, as things started going back. I mean, um, you had, you, you had pay-per-click stuff. You had Facebook ads, which were just starting, which is kind of when I started getting into them uh, and 12 years ago, I guess, and, and video. On, oddly enough, I mean, I started doing video about that time around 08. And um, I remember uh, my first, one of my first videos I did at my desk. And as a joke, I was, I was talking about how to build your business. And I had a, a piece of cardboard that I held up that had a sign on it and it said, broker will work for food, you know? And, and it was like, it was, it was a joke and it, it, it went over really well. It was funny, but you know, as I started doing video, I started, I started getting out there and making and, and building relationships with people in the in the local communities, not only just not only people, but also you know uh, the politicians in town and the different people out there that that could could make change and could make things better. So I got more. I wasn't in, I was involved for years and then stopped being involved. So I got involved with with the mayor and the mayor's committee for community relations and stuff. 
And it was, it, was, it was very good because it helped me get my company out there as well. You can do this as an individual. Now, granted, with what we've got today, we've never seen anything like this before where you're, I use the phrase again, shut in. Um, but, you know, the way to do that is, is, is really not that difficult this way. So I'm going to teach you how to get involved in your community really easily. If you just search your town on Facebook and put groups after it, Look for the groups that are involved in your town. You may know this already, but if you go to groups and begin interacting there, you're not selling, you're commenting, you're interacting. And as time goes on, this is one of the things I work on in my business with people. You need to, if you need to build more of a base, this is how you would do it. Because then you can also, as you start communicating with people there and interacting, they will in, 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 in time also, you'll, you'll become friends on Facebook and you'll become friends in the community as well. So working in groups in your community is one thing you can do that is free. You just need to spend the time and hey, that's one thing we've got now. So if you tell me you don't have the time, it's going to really solidify the reason you're saying that. And the reason you're saying that is you just don't want to. So, you know, yeah, if you have a desire to build your business and just say, screw this, I'm not going to let anything get to me, you know, that's what you got to do. That's one of the things you can do that's free. Yes. I think there's also a huge opportunity to just share good news, share the good things people are doing in the community. Look, like right now, people are looking for a central source at the neighborhood level, the community level that they can tune into because I, I don't see a whole lot going on uh, with leaders in communities, leaders in neighborhoods. I see cities and towns, but not not the neighborhood level. So just share the good stuff happening that, you know, so this store just donated supplies to the hospital or, you know, this, this restaurant, uh, the drive through still open and they just donated, you know, 200 meals to first responders or whatever, like share that stuff and do it on a regular basis. When you do that stuff and it's not about real estate, it's not about 10 tips for listing a house during the coronavirus or, you know, whatever. Um, and don't do that by the way. Um, <laughs> When, when you do those things, people in your community share it with their neighbors. They share it with their friends and their family and they tag each other in it because you're not the realtor, you're the community leader, you're the helper, you're the, the resource for that community. And it is just the tools we have available, as long as you get the subjects and the, the topics, the substance right, you can make an impact and win big in a very big way um, from it all. It's just, it, man, it's really exciting when you think about, about it that way. It really is. And, and one of the things I've seen is um, I always, I always make a joke about, about Facebook, right? I, I call it fake book. Yep. Um, <laughs> and then, and then when I talk about that, I always say, can we please make turn Facebook from fake book into real book? And honestly, what I've seen over the past few days is I've actually seen more real book than fake book. Yeah. People are posting things to make smiles. People are posting things for interaction. I mean, I know that I've done it and, 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 and I just, I am amazed at the interaction I've been getting with, with posts. I mean, I posted something, a little meme with Winnie the Pooh today. I love Winnie the Pooh. So I yeah. mean, and, and, and the reaction and the shares are amazing. That is also one way where you can make an impact on your, on your social community. And, and you know what? People will remember, and most of the people looking at my stuff are not real estate agents. They're not all those people out there. They're just, they're just friends of mine or, or, or friends that I've known for years and years. I mean, there are people coming out of the woodwork that I haven't talked to in a long time that are posting on my page. So it's, it's the interaction of, 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 of building relationship and rapport and just, like I said, start dating, start dating yourself and see how you're going to make yourself feel. Looking back at, at these crashes or recessions or whatever that you've been through, what uh, I'll, I'll ask it again because I want a very um, I, I want a focused answer. What do you wish you would have done more of? W where did you screw up? W what what did you get wrong or what did you not do enough of that you look back and you're like, damn it, I should have I should have done more of this during that time. Honestly, I think the biggest mistake I made was I tried to spend more money. I tried to spend more money where people weren't spending it thinking I was going to corner the market on this, that, or the other thing on the, on the marketing end of it. I think that was a big mistake I made. Um, you know, one of the things I could have done differently was, um, was get more into the community uh, and be more visible. 
and um, rally people around me to do the same thing. Um, you know, go out there and and stop into stores and say hello. I mean, I I have a, a person I work with now who's that's all he that's all he's ever done, and he's he does he does now what he's doing is he well he can't do it anymore, but he was going to three businesses a day, you know, on the outside and just saying hey how you doing? Thanks for doing this. Is there anything I can take some anything anywhere for you? Anything I can do thing for you today? You know, and they know him in the community because he's always done that before. So, yeah. you know, that's one thing I wish I had done differently, even though, I mean, look, there's going to be a time when we're able to go back out and these little businesses hopefully will reopen. Hopefully they're able to reopen. Um, and so that's where, you know, in our businesses, we're going to be able to grow better. And, and oddly enough, it's going to be the 80-20 rule all over again, and it always will be. Be the 20. Just be the 20 and go out there and be personable and just be yourself. And um, you know, don't worry about spending money. There are ways around it. And that was my biggest mistake. And I just, I just wish I had been more personal. Sure. Uh, yeah, spending money in and of itself, not – yeah. I mean, you could just waste a lot of money if you're doing the wrong stuff or, or it's not effective. So, of course. Um, I, I'm seeing some some local agents here in Salt Lake that are rallying their their friends to go buy gift cards at local restaurants or local right. businesses because guys, if you if you don't know yet, gift cards could be one of the best things you could do to support a local business through these tough times because they're getting the income now and they don't have to deliver this product or service until a later date. So just the fact that you bought a hundred dollar gift card could and you get others to do it as well, that could help them weather the storm. It's not costing them anything. They're getting income now to help pay their employees, keep the lights on, um, all of that. Gift cards are amazing. Reach out to your favorite local restaurant, your favorite bar, your favorite business, whatever it is, some place that you love to go. Maybe it's a coffee shop and, and ask what you can do. And maybe it's sharing their Facebook posts. Maybe it's, tagging them and saying, hey guys, the, this company offers gift cards. Um, maybe do a matching thing. Like, you know, for every 50 bucks you spend, I'll spend 50 or whatever. I'm seeing some other agents do that and it's really starting some movements locally. And the, the, the goodwill that comes from that is incredible. Like they're, they're legitimately trying to help and right. their business and their brand is growing right in front of their eyes and they didn't even mean to. Right. It's it's wild. So um, do good. It's, it, it, do good for others. You know, help people. You know, I, I, it's funny. I, I talked to uh, my uh, accountant company owner uh, uh, by email recently, and I on bottom of my of my email of the signature it says I just want to help people. So he sends me an email. Thank you so much for communicating with me. I haven't talked to you in such a long time. He says, tell me more about your bottom line. I just want to help people. Um, which is really an interesting question, um, simply because that, that's all I want to do. I mean, I have never, I have never thought about money or me first, and I never will. And um, because I know if, 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 if it's going to come, it's going to come. Um, so I, I, like I said, I mean, I can just say, I just want to help people. That's what I want to do. Love it. Uh, but before we wrap it up, is there any, anything missing? Any, any, or any guidance or wisdom that you've, gleaned over the years um, from going through uh, market shifts that, uh, okay, for let's say brand new agents or agents that have only been in the business for a couple of years, they're still trying to get their feet under them. And now all of a sudden, like the, the ground shifts from under them, like it did literally here in Utah last Wednesday with our 5.7 earthquake. That was wild. Must have. Uh, yeah. Wow. It was nice because no one, no one even talked about the coronavirus for 24 hours. That was nice. Um, <laughs> what advice do you have for a brand new agent or, or someone who's just a, you know, they're still green. How do they get through this? You know, so, what else do they need to know? So you need to, you need to notice all the things that either a mentor or a broker or a manager are telling you to do and teaching you and training you on. And you need to look at those skills, such as I mentioned that the sphere of influence, a lot of agents don't do it. And they wonder why they can't build a business. And I'm not talking about just sphere of influence. I'm talking about something that I work on all the time with people. And I, I've always been 
a little bit different from people. So everything that I do is a little bit different. And I push agents to do what others won't do, what others refuse to do. And I call it the art of differentiation, right? So basically as a new agent, do the things that don't sound, you know, like they're easy to do. We're in a, we're in a time of opportunity. And I mean, we're in a time of opportunity, I said earlier, to be better people. But when we have issues like this, and there's a lot of fear, and you have to take that fear and then try to figure out what are your options to beat that fear? What are your options to actually advance yourself or to get out of maybe maybe a state? Maybe 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 it's just you're in a funk or maybe you need more business. And you just asked me to, in the question, what should they do? Write down the, the action steps you can take, what your options are, and then look at the options and take, if you have 20 things written down, Take 5% and the, the best 5% and look at that 5, uh, 20%, excuse me, 20%. And then we'll look at that and see how you can work with that. And then see where the opportunity is in those three or four things that you like, that you can do and take advantage of that opportunity in the market, in your business, not of people, but in your business and do what others will refuse to do. Take that next step. If you think you've gone far enough, you haven't, go next. That's basically what I was doing. I hope that was succinct enough and, and, and specific in, you know, it's, it's, it's working with people and, and doing, if it's video, do video. If it's sphere of influence, do that. But the point is, is that you really need to do what you've been trained to do and use the opportunity that's out there because this will make you, this, this will make you, uh, a much more successful agent this time if you choose to work that's first and you said you said do the shit earlier this is what they need to do they need to do the work in order to see the opportunity and opportunities are going to open up more and more for them as they start doing it so just be fastidious in what you're doing work look if you've got to set yourself up a schedule probably the number one thing now which we all aren't good at set a schedule for yourself if that's eight to five if that's eight to eight whatever it is right? And if you get like, you need to walk away, walk away, take a walk, yeah. you know, whatever. I mean, but set yourself a schedule and work. You might want to work six days a week to make it easier for you. Because if you have, if you have downtime, you're going to want to do stuff that you used to do and you can't. So that's, that's really what I would say. Love it. David, uh, every, every time we have a guest on, we do some rapid fire questions to let people get to know you a little bit better. I want to run through those with you and then um, give you a chance to tell people where they can find you, where they can connect with you. And um, so pick either or one or the other. Uh, you don't need to elaborate if you don't want to. Um, and then I'm going to ask you for uh, the most impactful book you've ever read and a recommendation for an app, app, your favorite apps right now, Facebook or Instagram, Facebook, Facebook or LinkedIn. Facebook books or podcasts books podcasts or audio books podcasts iPhone or Android iPhone good call Alexa or Google home Alexa New York or LA New York burgers or pizza Oh man, that's a tough one. <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> the burgers or pizza. <laughs> Big one, man. You, you got to choose. Burgers. Gotta choose. Burgers. Oh, sorry, I missed that. Yeah. Cool. NFL or NBA? NFL. Pro or college sports? College. Mountains or beach? Shit, another tough one. Beach. Podcasting or vlogging? Vlogging. YouTube or Facebook Live? Facebook Live. Uber or Lyft? Uber. Gary V or Grant Cardone? Gary V. What's the most impactful book you've ever read? Start with why. Oh, Simon Sinek? Yeah. Love it. And then give us a recommendation for an app that, you, that you've recently downloaded, you've recently become obsessed with, does not have to be business related at all. Um, you know, that's a, that's another tough question. I don't even know where my phone is, but, um, uh, I'm probably, let's see. Um, 
I tell you what, I, I, it, it's not a recent one. It's something I, I, I've used with groups that I'm working with. I just, I just started working with, it, it's, it's really a simple one. It's been around for years and years and years. I didn't just download it. I think it has the best use because of its, because of its nature is WhatsApp. I mean, if you're not okay. using WhatsApp to get together with people, I think that's an easy way to do it rather than doing it any other ways. I've been using it a lot with agents I work with, with, with um, uh, church groups, and people I'm trying to organize to get going. And, and, and honestly, uh, it's, it, I use it all the time, all of the time. And it's, you can, wow. it's a lot easier to use than, than, than texting or anything like that. I, I love it. I, that's, I've been using it. I know, I know that's a simple one. and Probably you're looking for something different, but that's, that's the one I've been using. Oh, that's interesting because I know WhatsApp is a monster. I've never used it. I, I've never downloaded it, never used it. I don't think I know anyone besides you who does use it. Well, I'm, you know, I'm sure I'm wrong about that, but well, that, that one I I, I I started using when my daughters were in, were, in, were in overseas. I mean, Europe. And but but another good one, another good one that 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 really people should look into is Voxer. Yes, I love Voxer. But Voxer is incredible. In fact, for for our Massive Agent Society, uh, the the coaching program, that's something that I want to incorporate in as as an extra uh, benefit for members is a Voxer channel, a Voxer group. Um, for for you guys that don't use Voxer. First off, know this. It's buggy as shit sometimes. I don't know about you, but it drives me nuts with, with a little bugginess. But it's still one of my favorite apps for communication. You can do voice messages for as long as you want. You're not cut off at a minute like on Messenger and, and Instagram message. Um, GIFs, videos, texting, photos, and the voice. It's, it's incredible. You can do groups. So I'm a big fan of Voxer. So, so I, have a, I have a rapid fire question for you. One, I don't know how apropos it is for you, but... Uh, uh, Starbucks or Dunkin? Starbucks. Dunkin sucks. <laughs> <laughs> At least in Utah. So here's what's weird. Um, we didn't even get Dunkin Donuts in Salt Lake until I want to sit. Jeez. Now I'm having a hard time uh, judging time. Within the last 10 years, I, I want to say like five or six years ago, we got Dunkin Donuts here. And I remember like when I went to Florida, uh, other times that I've been out of Utah that I've gone to Dunkin and I was like, this place is incredible. Mainly the food. I, I don't really remember the coffee, but I was like, this place is incredible. I'd love to get them. Uh, still a big Starbucks fan. Uh, always will be. But we, when we got Dunkin' here, the, the franchise company that owns all the Dunkin' franchises, yeah. they botched the rollout so bad. People were waiting an hour for like a freaking turkey sausage sandwich. And not because it was that busy, but just the system was just jacked up. Orders were not coming through. It was weird. And then it didn't taste very good. It was, I don't know what it is, but there's a lot of Dunkins here that have gone out of business, the locations that have actually closed really? in the last five or six years. The, the thing about Dunkin is they, they, they actually all, if, if people don't know this, they actually used to make everything on site. Really? And they don't do that anymore. And, oh yeah. Up until about probably 10, 15 years ago, everybody, they baked their own donuts. There was a commercial you know, a, a really good commercial called Time to Make the Donuts. It was this old, short, fat guy. Looked like Danny DeVito. Time to make the donuts. He had a mustache. And it was like he was getting up like 2 o'clock in the morning to go to his Dunkin' Donuts and to make the, dunk, to make the donuts, right? Now there's like regional bakeries that like, like, like just hmm. manufacture these donuts to get out there. Yeah. Honestly, the food's not that good. But what Starbucks does with their food is a lot better, in my opinion. Um, yeah. So I'm a Starbucks guy as well. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I, man, I, Duncan in Utah, like nobody goes, <laughs> nobody goes. It's bizarre. Um, cool. David, thank you so much. Where can people find you if they want to connect with you and, and uh, see what else you're working on? Well, they can find me on, on Facebook at David Finale. It's my personal page and also real estate skill builder. It's a group, or you can go to real estate skill builder programs.com and check out, see what I got going on there. Um, but all of my personal information is on my personal page. I am not secret. My email is there. My personal cell phone number is there. So you can reach out to me from just going to Facebook. And it's spelled F-A-N-A-L-E, not the other way. Um, but that's one way to look at it. It's not the grand finale. It's the grand finale. <laughs> Love it. The finale. I, I totally botched the pronunciation. I called you finale on the okay, face, Facebook Live I did earlier. Um, in fact, let me, let me pull that up and see if anyone had any questions for you. I don't, I, th I think I hit them all. 
Yeah, we'll wrap it up. Um, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens over the next couple months with all this, but I appreciate you sharing your wisdom and your perspective that you've, that you've earned over the years thank you. um, going through all the craziness. So we'll see what happens, my friend. Uh, my objective is to add value. I hope I did that today for everybody. No doubt. No doubt. Thank you so much. Talk no. to you soon. Guys, I hope you found that as beneficial as I did. Super empowering, super informative. And, and look, he survived 40 years of ups and downs in our industry, lots of different things, the rise of technology. And here's what's cool about David. I mean, he has a Facebook live show. He is usually the 40 year veterans that you meet. They're, they're like wearing their name tag and they're, they still are like, should I get on the Facebook? You know, oh, here's my business card. Like, that's not David. He, he has a Facebook live show. He's very, he does all the same online marketing stuff that I do. He's, he's incredible. There's no wonder he's winning. There's no wonder that he's stayed ahead of the curve for this long. And, um, you know, a year from now, when we look back at this crisis, he's going to be someone who's still standing strong. So, um, thank you, David, for being on the show. Uh, really, really appreciate it. And uh, thank you for sharing everything that you have. Guys, remember, if you have not yet, go to massiveagentpodcast.com slash 10x webinar, 10x webinar, register for the free retargeting webinar that I'm doing 100% free on Tuesday, March 31st at noon Eastern time. And if you cannot make it live, no worries, register anyways, and we'll send you the replay link as soon as that's available about an hour after the live ends and you can watch it at your own leisure. So thank you. Please subscribe to the show if you haven't yet. And if you have received value, if you like this show, if you learned something, if there's something uh, that you found valuable today, please share this with a colleague. Send a link, tag us online, share it in your Instagram stories, You know, send an email to your, your team, your, your brokerage, whatever. Please help us share the good word and reach more agents, especially now at this time. I feel like today's interview needs to be heard by every agent out there because there's a lot of agents throwing their hands up, a lot of agents worried and scared. I know some of you are, and I am too to a certain extent, but I'm also excited as hell about the opportunities that are at our feet right now. You just have to do it. You just have to do this stuff and lean into it and trust that uh, that it's going to recover. Um, it's going to be fine. We're all going to get through this and thrive if you're playing offense. So thank you guys so much. Appreciate you. Go sell some homes. Go close some loans. Stay safe. Wash your damn hands. Stay inside. See you guys next week. <laughs>